with all the big calls on all those big races. Welcome back to another feature show. What a shout, the flagship here at the Racing Post. It's our weekend feature show. That's right, somewhere in the capital on a Friday morning. Dave Orton, thrilled to be back with you. What a weekend we've got. If you're new to the show, like and subscribe on YouTube. Of course, you can watch on Facebook as well. And anything on Twitter, it's hashtag what a shout. Brought to you by our sponsors, Bet365, every week. I'll tell you what, some man that was in very good form last week was yourself, Kills, and delighted to be doing this again with you. Yeah, I had a good, uh, had a good week last week. Cobbler's Dream winning the Lanzarote. You've got a good record in that race, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, I like that race for some reason. I don't know, it's funny, you, you, you have an affinity with certain races, don't you? And, uh, that, that one's been quite kind to me over the years. You must have then really been getting your teeth stuck into this weekend. You know, you, 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 on a Monday is when you look ahead, isn't it? And yeah, you're looking. It's not my sort of racing, to be honest. When it comes to, you know, we've got the we've got these really good um, horses, but lots of short price favourites. Obviously, we've got the we've got the great matchup between Shishkin and Energy Main, but they're not, you know, they're not in my sort of price range when it comes to yeah. punting. There aren't too many races like that, but there are a couple. A quick word on that. From you, Kills. We weren't sure, were we, whether this would happen. I mean, come on, we've. we've it's funny. We would. Well, we've been talking about it for a while, haven't we? I mean, you know, in the anti-post betting, um, energy main was fav, and Shishkin, you could have got two to one. That, Are you that, surprised how, it's happened? Um, I think everyone's a little bit surprised. I mean, even there was a poll on Monday when they were both declared, and, you know, and you know, it was. You know, it, it was more than 50% of people <laughs> suggesting one of them, uh, one of the trainers would blink and, uh, and and come out. So let's hope it does go ahead. I mean, everyone, you know, we, we're expecting it now. Uh, it's great, interesting for the interesting point for the festival. Um, if one of them gets stumped, and it could be either one, like you know, we know that we all probably we probably all fancy she's going to be. Then does the other one end up in a rhino? Well, this is the thing, isn't it? Both we, of them, both of them will get way over two two miles standing on their head, wouldn't yeah. they? You know what I mean? So it's interesting. There was a lot said, wasn't there, in the week about short prize favourites and the bookies not minding it. Pat Cooney from our sponsors, Bet Three Six Five. We're far from settled yet, aren't we? Plenty of chess pieces <laughs> to move on that board. Yeah, and then we've got Jolly Jack Frost on the uh, on the equation as well because. Um, that, that grandstand at Ascot is very high up and, uh, you know, they're good to race out in the country, but the home straight can have the frost in it. So let's just hope it all goes ahead. And uh, well, what, what a bonus it is for us, isn't it? Yeah, we've got a marvellous undercard as well, haven't we? So it's the big clash. The BHA have been calling for it in their new blueprint. We've been calling for it, haven't we? You have viewers as well. Who's going to win? We'll be doing our big race preview for you later in the show. But we've scoured the racing world. Who's the guest that we've brought for you? Well, no better man this week. On Monday, Jerry <coughs> McGrath, integral part of Seven Barrows, Nicky Henderson's operation, 206 career winners, 134 the, the big maestro himself of Seven Barrows. Jerry, you announced your retirement, and 12 months, you've been trying to get back in the saddle, finally called it quits. Welcome to the show. Morning, Dave. Morning, lads. Uh, good to see you. Yeah, like I said, I just, um, it was probably one of those things I probably knew in my own head, probably a good six weeks before Christmas, that I was probably struggling progress-wise with the shoulder and the hip. Um, the hip actually healed relatively well, uh, but the shoulder, there was an awful lot of nerve damage there. And uh, yeah, I've just, just really struggled. Um, and I kind of just, I met my specialists and surgeons last week and they all kind of came to the agreement that they weren't going to pass me. So it was frustrating times, but at the same time, I've had a good career. I've had loads of memories and, um, yeah, loads of good days. And nobody can take them from me, that's for sure. No, absolutely. Ending with a smile and in one piece, Jerry. of course. 12-year career, then two Cheltenham Festival winners. Una Artis, 2012. Really well fancied she was, wasn't she? For the boss as well in 2019 in the Ultima. Beware the bear. And let's get the graphic up then for you viewers out there. These are the best horses on the track that Jerry has ridden. Beware the bear up. There's some right characters you can see there, Jerry. Look, Santini in there as well. My goodness gracious me, those are some memories. Yeah, for sure. You know, obviously when you're associated with a big yard, um, you always have the opportunity of getting on very good horses, whether it be in the mornings at home or on the track. And thankfully, yeah, through my, through my years, I got on a few good ones, like you said, with um, Beware the Bear, Verdana Blue, um, Brother B, Thien Val, Santini. Yeah, it's, it's been brilliant. And like you said, I've got plenty of pictures and plenty of memories. And um yeah, like I said, it's been a great career and like I said, hopefully uh, we just move on to the next chapter and plenty to look forward to. 
Well, before we get on to that next chapter, Jerry, I mean, uh, imagine working every day at Seven Barrows. This week, all the greats have come out, you know, that were associated <coughs> with Jerry Barry Garrity, of course, Nicky Anderson, glowing testimony, of course, and he, he, you're going to remain a big part there, aren't you? Some of the workhorses you must have got on it. That wouldn't be hard to get up in the morning, would it? Well, yeah, you can imagine there can be a right buzz, especially when it's coming up to the big meetings and you've got all those horses to look at. And I'm, and, and I'm sure Jerry got on loads of them uh, in, in, in private, as it were, uh, if, if not on the track. Yeah, it must be fa it must be fascinating at that sort of time when you know everybody's getting geared up for it. Yeah, Jerry, let's come to you then. What? Uh, okay, let's bow, let's bowl you a curveball for our viewers out there. What was the best workhorse that you sat on, Jerry? Um. I suppose it's probably well documented. I was always very closely connected with Simon Sig. And so obviously around his era, when he was really, after he's won like the two and a half mile novice hurdle at Cheltenham, and he was really, before he went chasing and, you know, before he had kind of major issues, training issues and stuff, you know, he was just a hard horse to train later on. But like in his in his heyday, when he used to work, he was, he was frightening. Like, to, like, you know, I ride a good few flat horses for Clive Cox and stuff during the summer and stuff. And I promise you, like, he, he would win a mile and a half maiden any day of the week. Well, he would have. Um, and it was actually interesting because, like, obviously around his time, he had Sprint to Sacra um, in the same era and the same kind of bunch of very good horses. And, you know, it was incredible. We, we like, the boss, you know, he was actually nearly scared to work them together because, you know, it was frightening the bits of work they did. And you never wanted to work them too hard at home. But we did a few times, probably two or three times, and yeah, you'd never get a buzz like that at home. Um, it probably the equivalent to riding your legs if you're you're very good flat horses at home, things like that. But when Sprint Sacra and Simon Sig went head to head in a piece of work, it was um, it was a very special feeling, that's for sure. It, it's yet another crop, isn't it, that uh, that we can be excited about at Seven Barrows. Should we have a word for Bobsworth as well? Sad news: seventeen-year-old Bobsworth passed away. The Gold Cup winner, of course, he was another one of the greats there, wasn't he? Yeah, incredible. Yeah, it was actually, yeah, it was gutting yesterday. I was talking to the boss yesterday, kind of about 11 o'clock, uh, just about entries, and he said he, he got the phone call earlier on from Charlie Vigers, who um, who obviously had him in retirement. And he's had, a, I suppose, the, the, obviously devastating he's passed away, but he had a brilliant retirement from from his, from his when he retired to now. And it's just unfortunate, just a freak accident, but he was an incredible racehorse. He wasn't the biggest, he wasn't the prettiest, Um uh, but he he was as he was as tough as they come, and when it came to the Cheltenham Hill, he he was not he never laid down, and I think his his record around Cheltenham, the race course itself was incredible. I think he won four we four, he won four or five times around there. Uh, but yeah, just a good story because obviously Barry Garrity bought him as a fold, pin hooked him, and yeah, and it was a good story, and he was an incredible race horse, and um, yeah, unfortunately he passed away. Yeah, thrilled to have uh, Jerry with us then on the show. Let's talk about the next chapter quickly, Joe, because for a couple of years now you've been developing the bloodstock side of thing, you've been pin hooking. That's going to take you forward, right? Yeah, for sure, Dave. Um, when, when I got injured last year, like the surgeons were very, you know, they were very much of the case. The amount of metal work they put into me and stuff like that, they were, they would have been surprised if I got back race riding. But obviously being a jockey and being very kind of, well, tunnel vision, you know, I didn't want to believe him. But at the same time, it was there as well. So with that in mind, I've kind of really kind of stepped up the bloodstock work this year because obviously I've had more time to get to the sales and kind of build up a few clients that way. And um yeah so the buying and selling is going well and like i said just the pin hooking is a nice side too i like buying young folds and um bringing them along to yearlings or three-year-olds so yeah it's, it's a different side and it's something i've been working towards um uh, but obviously now i think i'm going to just have to depend on it a bit more i think to, to, to pay the mortgage not yet not yet out there the clarence house will be towards the end of the show but could we be seeing another star 125 from seven barrows up at Haydock, kicking us off. It's the Rossington, Maine, John Bond, Pat Cooney. I guess the question is, what price? Yeah, well, John Bond is currently 5-2 to two on, Dave, and it's amazing, really. You know, the most talked-about race at the Cheltenham Festival is, isn't the Gold Cup, not the champion hurdle. It's the supreme novice hurdle. We had another horse throw his hat into the ring, Die Sart Dynamo, over the weekend. So John Bonney's one of the market leaders for the Supreme, and this is a good test for him. He's got to give £5 away, and it's a small field yet again on soft ground but you do look at him this time around i do think there is a recognized front runner in the race and that's richmond lake we've seen these couple of hurdle wins haven't they when the tapes have got up and they've dawdled along for the first furlong i think richmond lake will take them along at a good steady gallop but you do look at him on official ratings don't you he's got at least 10 pound in hand and his probably his best days are in front of him i'm still not sure how good he is really i don't think there's anything really you could say mm, yeah he, he he should be favorite for the supreme or anything like that 
But I think we're all waiting for a big run from him, so maybe we'll get it tomorrow. He's 5-2 to two on if he floats your boat. Mm, OK, is this one for the money buyers' kills? I guess the most important thing here to say, we've got a horse called Mai Tai, who's second favourite for Harry Fry, who finished a street behind Constitution Hill, the stable, mate. We're going to get a line. Yeah, exactly. We're going to get some sort of line. Uh, I mean, it all depends on how the race is run, doesn't it? You would hope John Bond actually gets in a race where they go a gallop because all they've done is crawl so far. Uh, we know he's got loads of speed. Um, but you see, last time at Ascot, I think he beat a load of stayers uh, in a race that was all about was all about speed at the end of because they went so slow. Mm. Um, but it doesn't mean that a horse that hasn't run in a strongly run race won't, won't be even better suited to it. Uh, and he could well be. I mean, obviously, he is the brother of Duvan, so there's been lots of talk about him. He hasn't done anything wrong. Um, but we do need to see him be properly tested. Uh, and Mai Tai, I thought, you know, going into that race of sand, I thought Mai Tai was a pretty decent horse. He looked decent when he, when, when he won, and his form had worked out too. Yeah. So for Constitution Hill to come and absolutely butcher him, uh, even even you know even if my eye was carrying a penalty, it doesn't matter. Uh, and obviously Harry Fry didn't want to take him on in the toll of hurdle. He was among the five day decks. He's going to the Washington Maine instead. He's got a, a, the, another Henderson brick wall called John Bond to deal with. We will find out. I think my eye is a decent horse, so it, I think he's certainly the best horse uh, that John Bond has faced so far. I expect John Bond to win. I'm starting to believe a little bit more in him than I did. Yeah, uh, you have taken time, haven't you? Uh, well, you, you have to take time. I mean, you got to remember when he won. When he won his bumper, um, it was a terrible bumper, and he just won it very easily. And then there was that farce of a race at Newbury, uh, where his only main rival couldn't jump to save his life. Happened at Ascot, though, again, uh, didn't it? Uh, and again at Ascot, but he is doing he is doing it so easily. He jumps super, and he's jumping, he? and that's and that's the other thing. He. he Flicks over hurdles like a champion. He reminds me of Bouvardier in that uh, respect. You know, yeah, he, he, he's really fast over his hurdles. You cannot, you cannot fault him for what he's done. All you can do is fault the way the races have been run and wonder about the strength of, about the strength of them. I think he's running against the best horse he's running against. I'd still expect him to win. Uh, you'd like to see something special, but I don't want it to be too special because I'd back Constitution Hill, not only for the Supreme, but also for the other one, just in case. Well, <laughs> now, this is, I wanted to touch on this. All right, we, I think we can indulge ourselves. No hot topics this week. Let's go into the mind of Keeley, a little bit dangerous as it might be. But you did write a piece in the weekend, didn't you? You pretty much said Constitution Hill will go Ballymore and he was a, well, he's a meaty price. Well, I, I can't I, wait to hear what Jerry's got yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, I think he'd get the trips down on his head. He's, he's the one, you know, out of the two, he's the one that, he's the one that you know will settle. Yeah. Because he's laid back, he'd do whatever you want. Right? But obviously, Nicky Henderson's come out and said there's no reason why they can't run against each other. But what happens is, I mean, nothing can be set in stone now. What happens if Willie Mullins decides I'm running Dysart Dynamo and Sir Gerhard in the Supreme. And if I'm Michael Buckley, I'd be saying, well, why don't we go for this other race? It ain't all that good. Like, you know what I mean? If you look at last year's two races, uh, the Ballymore was actually a fantastically strong race with three serious horses it's in always it. The, it's always the And, serious and the good Supreme race. was a poor race with one good horse in it. Like, you know, and now... It could be the other way round. Do you so, think that you might have got it wrong? Do you think John Bond could be the one that steps up? I doubt it because I think he's, he's I think he's a free horse. Neon Wolf won horse. this, didn't he, a couple of years ago and very nearly took yeah, out the Ballymore. Cinders and Ashes won yeah, it in two thousand twelve. Supreme winner. Didn't, didn't win Neon Wolf win the Ballymore? He they, got nutted, win the didn't Leamington he? at Warwick or something. Yes, didn't he, didn't he, he, he won this. Yeah, uh, but yeah, so you know. It, it's difficult. I, w I, I would say John Bond is the one with, you know, they both got natural speed, but John Bond is not the one that you'd want to be going up because he'd be keen. And if, and if Dysart Dynamo goes, he'll get the lead that, that yeah. everyone says he wants. All right, let's go to Jerry then. You've been waiting in the wings. You've heard everything, dissecting it. Who's the best, Jerry? John Bond or Constitution Hill? Yeah, well, it's fascinating listening to everyone's views, you know. And like, I was actually in Seven Bars this morning and we were kind of talking about it over the breakfast table, kind of saying, like, it's just such a lucky position to be in that seven bars have this decision to make. And like the other thing is we're talking about John Bond, we're talking about Constitution Hill. And like we're we're very lucky with the novice hurdlers this year. We've got other horses in the background, like Balco Coastal walking on air, who made their made his uh, seasonal debut at Newbury during the week. And like if we hadn't the two top horses, those horses would actually be going for Supreme and would they're actually going for Ballymore and things like that. But we just there's so much strength and depth there this year, it's incredible. And you have to bear in mind we didn't have one runner in an obvious hurdle at Cheltenham last year. So um to have four, five, six, you know, proper grade one potential horses, you know, it's incredible. Very lucky. Um I like the one thing I would say is that John Bon and um 
uh, Constitution Hill. They've never actually worked together upsides at home, which is very interesting. And I don't know if they ever will, but uh, they haven't yet anyway, which will be very interesting. Um, but I suppose, like, when you come to say which ones will step up, to be honest, I don't think it'll matter because I think the two of them, and this is my only my own opinion, you know, this is not, like, there's nothing set in stone. We're a long way away from Cheltenham yet, but I do think the two of them will line up in the Supreme. Um, I think both sets of owners are keen to go two miles. Um, yeah, so I don't know, it'd be very interesting. I suppose if I had the choice of stepping one up, I think it would be Constitution Hill because he's just has the temperament, he's so relaxed. Um, but then at the same time, they both, well, Constitution Hill got beaten a point to point, but he made a terrible mistake the last, but both of them are, should be point to point winners, I suppose. But but they will stay. Um, but yeah, but I just get the gut feeling that I have the gut feeling that I think they'll be lining up against each other in um, on the first day over two miles. Absolutely fascinating. Oh, this, can it? I just say, Jerry, there's a job for you as a politician because you talk for ages there without <laughs> actually answering the question of which one was the best. <laughs> well, I, I think yeah. He's, yeah, you're absolutely right. Do we really believe him that they've not worked together yet? Well, it's great to hear. I, 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 I'm going to go with Jerry at the moment. Uh, and of course, you mentioned yeah. walking on air. Wasn't he impressive? Of course, he could step up. Look, let's go back to tomorrow's race. John Bond. He was sweaty when he did that work at Newbury. Everyone went and had a look at him. He was keen. And of course, at Newbury, he was told not to lead. Aidan Coleman just thought he had to go and do his thing. And again, it was the same case last time, wasn't it, at Ascot. When this guy gets a lead off a proper pace, and it would have been lovely to see him run the time figure this weekend as well, he is the real deal, isn't he? Yeah, definitely, for sure. It's actually very interesting, because that day when he galloped, like, obviously before he, he made his debut, that was probably the worst kind of, if he's been on the track, he was very sweaty, very anxious that day. But to be fair to the horse, and his two runs so far, you cannot knock him. He's been very professional beforehand, during a race, after a race, which has kind of surprised a lot of us because he is like, it's been well documented. He's a very buzzy kind of, you know, he just likes to get on with things. But like I said, I think if they, if, if like, I think it's fascinating, look at like from a jockey's point of view, looking at the race tomorrow, um, like, if he does have a genuine front runner, with that, I think that's only going to suit him even better. He, um, like I said, as his work at home, he always takes a lead. He slots in behind. He comes and joins a lead horse and two of them quicken up together. So, and he can lead from the front as he's proven as well. So, but it would be great just to see him take a lead tomorrow in a good, you know, honestly run race around there. I think the track will suit him. It'll be probably the slowest ground he's ran on, but that's not a worry. He moves very well. He should get through the ground. And he's out of a Santa Saint Mare who, you know, they have plenty of, Plenty of their horses going heavy ground and soft, whatever it is up there tomorrow. So that won't be an issue. But yeah, I'd love to see him take a lead tomorrow in a true run race. Isn't it interesting? And after listening to Jerry, you'd be thinking that two to five horses not the best price in the world. So look, we're not sure who's the best. Even at home, they're not sure what's the best. So my tie, and this is a race full of quality horses, could just give us that line. What will we see happening to the Supreme Market after the Rossington Main? Two o'clock, it's that Haydock for the second of our big race previews this weekend. Whoppers, don't forget, we've still got the Clarence House to come. If it's as long as the Rossington Main, I'll be surprised. That was proper in depth. But we have a champion hurdle trial. <laughs> <laughs> I want to come to you with this because uh, no, I'm going to call this your uh, horse as well. Tommy Soska's a horse that you saw a long way out. But did you ever think he would be the best British champion hurdle No, prospect? I mean, I actually opposed him at Musselburgh last time um, because I thought he had, a, he, had, he had a tough task on his hands. He's obviously improving. He's improving fast. And, you know, a quick two mile um, suits him down to the ground. He doesn't, he, he, he handles ground. Uh, he's a very decent horse. But let's talk about two mile, well, let's talk about conditions hurdles in Britain. They just don't work, oh, do they? Oh, here we go. This could take they forever, They do not kids. work. I mean, look, we've got, we've got something that is laughably registered as the champion hurdle trial. Uh, and there's only one horse in the race that would be shorter than 500 to one for a champion hurdle, and he's 50s. Let's bear in mind, he is 50s, like, you know what I mean? I, I mean, I, I could see him running well and finishing fifth or sixth in the champion hurdle, but let's face it. Is this a plea right? to the quality jump racing review well, group? we've got another conditions hurdle race at, at Linkfield on Sunday that's attracted five runners, right? I mean, and it's a 100 grand race, yeah. right? There are more conditions, there are more top-end conditions hurdles in Britain than there are horses good enough currently to run in them. Mm. Right? And it's ridiculous, and something has to be done because it's completely pointless. Uh, so, so yeah, it's a it's a waste of a race as far as I'm concerned. Tommy's Oscar will just win, mm. but we won't I'm not learn convinced. anything about him. I think he was a bit flattered at Musselburgh, although he did it very well. Christopher Wood is the horse we went for, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And Angus Schlade rode him that day. He, he wasn't. Uh, I don't know what happened, but I think he got a bump on the bend or something like that. He got going too late, basically. Yeah, he cruised through the race. Tommy's he did Oscar cruise. Really look, well. he was a different class, but mm. uh, uh, in Hunter's Call. We've got a horse who brings arguably superior form to the table. That Cheltenham run last time was fantastic. Well, the handicapper says otherwise, isn't he? Well, look, you know, we'd be giving him 12 pounds. He's a, he, a he is a veteran uh, yeah. now. But if you yeah. watch back that, 
Ollie Murphy's done incredibly well to get this horse back. Coming to the last, I thought he was going to go and win, and he'll find him out. I would be happy to have a go with Hunters at would Tommy's you? Oscar. I'd, yeah. be, I'd be happy to lay it. All right, okay, let's see what Pat Cooney thinks. Yeah, I think they'll finish in betting order here. I think Tommy's Oscar will beat Hunter's Call, and the rest have an awful lot to find. You look at Tommy's Oscar. We sponsored a race at Doncaster in December, and I said to the connections afterwards, will you go for the more battle that we sponsor at um, Kelso in, in a few months' time? And they said, yeah, that would be on the agenda, but once he's good and well, we'll just keep running him. And uh, I know they can't wait to go over fences with him. I think the guy they, they bought him off said, wait till you see this fella over fences. So, yeah, but he just keeps rocking up and winning, doesn't it? Great to see a horse. Fit and well, turns up, runs, runs to his best form every time. Uh, Danny McMenamin back in the saddle tomorrow, so good luck for him. I just presume he'll win. He's he's going forward. Hunter's Call is a 12-year-old, so he's not going forward, although he has got recent form. But as Keel said there, the handicapper says Tommy's has got £11 in hand. And what's not not to love? I think of all the shorties, maybe 8 to 11, which we are at the moment, I think maybe that represents more value than some of the other shorties around at the moment. Mm, OK, some of the good horses in there, of course. Jerry, if you had a look at this race. Yeah, and I, I agree with all those points made. It's actually it's kind of just from a different angle. Again, I was actually, <clears throat> I was offered this horse as a point, when he was a point to point or two seasons ago now. And like Colin Bow trained him. And Colin Bow is renowned to be one of the best point to point trainers in Ireland. And it took him seven goes to win a point to point. And I can remember thinking, this horse must be very moderate. Like usually those point to point lads, they can if they don't win on debut, they win the second day. And a few people in Ireland put this horse to me and they kept pushing him to me. And I was like, oh, lads, I just can't, I couldn't have the horse. He was priced accordingly because of his form, but like he obviously just didn't stay three miles. You know, he's one of those horses he probably would have gone down the bumper route um if he was with a trainer, but he's just done nothing but improve and improve throughout the last kind of 18 months. And like you said, I think he's gonna be very hard to beat. One that got away for Jerry then. Fantastic insight, isn't it? OK, look, whatever happens, Hunter's Call, Tommy's Oscar, there's going to be a great must-not-miss. It might not be the sexiest champion hurdle trial, but 2 o'clock, where else would you rather be? 2.55. Shall we go to the Royal Berkshire track? OK, then. Race preview three. It is the Bet365 handicap chase. This is a barnstormer. Pat Cooney. Yeah, uh, delighted to sponsor this race. There's eight runners at the final decks. Good prize, good race. And of the eight, you look at them, some of them are in really good form. Five of them actually come here on the back of a recent win. And the top four in the handicap, Fanny on de Struvel, Palmer's Hill, Amor Nadui, Killer Clown, they all won very well last time out. But for their sins, they've either gone up seven or eight pound in the handicap. So you couldn't look at them necessarily and say they're particularly well handicapped. But the flip side is they do come here in great form. So um, it's an intriguing race, plenty of different opinions. I think the consensus in the office seems to be Palmer's Hill is probably the most talented of his handicap, Mark. Maybe he's a little bit fragile and they have to run him, you know, quite sparsely, but he's certainly in the equation. Um, I thought Phoenix Way had a good solid chance. He didn't win last time out, but he ran well and he's off the same handicap, Mark. Harry Fry going well again. But this is the sort of race, I think Palmer's Hill will be favourite to win the race, but you can make a plausible case out for anything in this race. And I, my, my eye is just drawn to Phoenix Way purely because I think the handicapper may have just got hold of the front four above him in the weights. Well, I thought we'd think, see what Kills thinks about that. And let's go to Jerry about that. OK, let's ask you about Ascot first and foremost, Jerry. Is it a specialist track? Remember uh, when Dash or Drasher, uh, for last week's guest, uh, Jeremy Scott won? They dominate from the front, these horses, don't they? When do you really start get racing in these, you know, two-mile, four-plus handicap chases at Ascot? And does one catch your eye? Yeah, like Ascot, it's one of those... You know, even even Nicky, like, you no, know, sometimes you wouldn't send a, a novice chaser to Ascot first time. Sometimes, usually, if you, if you could avoid it, you would, because it's a real jumping test. You know, it's a proper national hunt track. Fences are big. They ride brilliant. But like I said, you have to be there on nice horses. It's not a nice track to ride around when you're uh, when you're on a moderate horse that can't jump very well. But no, it, it really is a proper national hunt track with great fences. And like you said, it, the one thing is this: it's a two mile five. It's a lovely start. It's a you know, it's one, like one of those Ascot. It's the three mile start at Ascot is one of those kind of bogey starts that no jockey really enjoys because it's you know you four or five fences downhill it's a race to the first and it can be a bit tricky but two mile five lovely start and um, should be lovely ground around ascot tomorrow one horse i'm kind of drawn to here you now is the emma lavelle horse killer clown who uh, who won the last day he was probably been a fraction disappointing before that but he got things right the last day wing canton and he was impressive i think he's gone up six or seven pounds again but i just think he's one of those horses he just not lost his way but was a bit disappointing and hopefully he's back on the trail now and 
on the winning trail, hopefully. And he might just, uh, I just think at 5 6 to 1, I think he's a good bet. Mm, all right, Joey, thanks for that. And again, fascinating insight, isn't it? My favourite jumps track is Ascot, which is quite controversial. People are like, not Cheltenham. I love going to Cheltenham, everything about it. But I, I'm not far from Ascot. I sort of grew up watching racing there. And some of the riders and horses I've seen going around there. And these two mile five stars, it's just so interesting to hear about uh, the three mile. We agree on one here, but, but like unanimously. But before we do, kill a clown. We're opposing him again, aren't we? Is he going to make a clown of us? Well, he could do, couldn't he? I mean, I'm, you know, this is a race that's, that, that's got me in a bit of a mess, to be honest, anyway, because of, of certain Venetian Williams has declared Fanyan Destreval. And I really fancied one that was out of the handicap. I was hoping. Fanny and Desvaux was going to go for the Fleur de Lis chase, which he has now been declared for as well. This is at Lingfield, of course. Uh, at Lingfield on Sunday. So there's a question mark over whether, whether Fanny runs. Uh, obviously, if he doesn't run, I'll be devastated because Lina Lee King would have been a certainty off our mark around 128. Keep a, remember that name. Will do. Remember that name because I think he's an incredibly well handicapped horse. But anyway, we, we look at it now. Killer Clown. I backed him at Newbury. Uh, they put cheek pieces on him. He was really keen. He we all the, backed him. He at went Newbury. to the front too soon, and he didn't see it out. Um, dropped back to two mile four at Wynn Canton last time on bottomless ground. He's not supposed yeah. to like. Uh, looked like he could go around again, so he should stay the extra furlong here, shouldn't he? Uh, you get these horses, don't you? That it's just one of those. Yeah, he's, he's a. He's a horse that's got in my head because whenever I backed him, he's blown out, and whenever I opposed him, you're I'd, on the second. I backed yeah. Slate House. I know, yeah. Uh, uh, Slate has very well handicapped. Just, uh, you just wonder how much he came back to form two weeks ago. But I mean, he looked like he'd go around again, Killer Clown. You got to, you got to fear him. I, I, I brought it down to him and Phoenix Way. We like Phoenix Way. I think that Ansam is a young, progressive horse, and Phoenix Way looked like he had him at the second last, and he, he just pulled out a bit more. You can't really say Phoenix Way didn't stay yeah, because he's won over slightly further yeah. um, over. Hurdles at Huntingdon, albeit of a much, much lower mark. Um, but he's one of those horses who's always travelled well. He's got a lot he's of class. Got, he's, got, he's, got, he's got that, you know, he can travel. He was fourth to protect her in, in a grade one at uh, Aintree. I think tomorrow might be his day. because so hold on to him a bit longer I think this they time. Hold on, well, I don't, think they, I don't think they necessarily need to. I think if he goes for it two out uh, tomorrow, over two mile five, he'll see the race out much stronger than mm -hmm. he did over three mile. That, that's the hope. Yeah. Um, but he certainly travels like he travels well enough for a horse that can drop in trip. Palmer's Hill too high in the weights now. I don't, I don't know whether he's too high in, in the weights. He's high enough at, in the weights at the price he is for me. That, that's the only thing. He's Wouldn't really you, come you know, good, isn't he? Not but he is nine. It's yeah, he's, he's been a very, very fragile horse, hasn't he? But he's always promised to be a decent one, yeah, right. and he's turning into one. But whether we can keep on doing it is another matter. All right then, Phoenix Way for us. Let's hope he takes flight. 2.35, we're already cooking with gas in here now on Water Shout, and they will be in St Helens as well, back up at Haydock. It's the Peter Mars Chase. Do you remember this 12 months ago? The tractor, as you called him, mm. <laughs> Rob the guy. Of course, you'd spoken to the breeder. We've said this line a few times since. He can't have it soft enough. Uh, this will be his race. Uh, He's higher in the weights this time around. It was a good second, of course, to uh, Aplutard at Haydock, of course, in the Betfair Chase. It seems to be his track now. Why? Should be be with him or against him tomorrow? Well, I mean, he, you know, he's only seven pound high. He would have won it with seven pound more on his back last year. I think this is a better race. It's mm. a little bit deeper, um, and you know, as well as he did run uh, in the Betfair Chase last time, I'm not. I just think the race just completely fell apart with everything, didn't it? Like you know, and and Aplutar did absolutely toy with him. So we don't really know where he is, but we do know he likes the ground, and we do know he's a very classy horse. I can certainly see him winning. He's just about short enough for me. Uh, and I like the old boy, like if you lad. I think I, I think he's got a big run in him. He's third to Black Lion um, at this track two starts ago, and that was a really good run, especially with Black Lion coming out and absolutely hacking up again and going. He's gone up a stone since, I think. Like you know, Dan Skelton seems to have found the key to him because uh, he, obviously he was a decent horse in the past as well. Late few lad, this time last year was right at 162. Um, because, you know, he'd beaten Santini at, at, at Aintree, you know, and he was still running well in the spring. He was seventh in the, in the, in the, in the Scottish National, wasn't beaten, wasn't beaten that far. A uh, little bit below par at Weatherby last time, and it was a real sort of war for the role of Merrick. But, you know, he likes this track. He's won here. He's down at mark of 146. You know, I know he's 12, uh, but he's a tough horse when he's on a going day. 
Yeah. Uh, and he's got a nice low weight. This I'm always drawn to him because he's he's in those colours, the late Trevor Hemmings. He's grey, tries his eyes, he's a, got a classy model. I think it's the lowest weight he's going to have on his back since yeah. 2016. It, it is interesting. I just wonder whether they were trying to get him ready for the national already. You mentioned uh, the Roland Merritt. It's a, what I call a sting race for me. Though. I don't like to mm. look back on him because Empire Steel, I'm pretty sure, would have gone on and won. Probably would have done, but he did have a, you know, a, an heavy enough fall. He did. And, and, that, and, and yeah. those falls on bad ground can be good. Can be because you were getting tired. You don't yeah. know. You're holding a horse together. But I mean, yes, you can definitely see it. He ran into a well handicapped horse here last time, didn't he? Yeah. Strictly a dancer. So. Exactly. And my <coughs> so I had it down to him and remastered. I'm going to take on Royal Pagai. Um, I think remastered. If he comes on and he's entitled to for that run there, of course, in the Tommy Whittle, which yeah, is I mean, usually I, a good listen, step. Listen, I've backed a I've backed a horse of David Pipes today uh, on Friday. Uh, on Friday, but uh, he never been a lot of winners. Hmm. What he did have, have, yeah, did he have, have the one, Somerset he, National he, he winner did. yesterday, he but did. that Come made him, so that's two out of 40 odd in January, so it's just a little bit of a worry. I can't all win, Kills, but no. All right, Jerry, you've listened <laughs> to us. What do we see? Are we going to see another Gold Cup type performance from Royal Pagai, or would you be lurking elsewhere? Yeah, well, I suppose Royal Pagai, I suppose he's kind of the obvious one, isn't he? And I like, I like, I agree with Kili. I do think he's short enough at nine to four, two to one, whatever he is. I suppose the one thing, obviously, I know it was a, a very good race the last day when he ran, taking on. But the one thing that just disappointed me that day was just his jumping. He didn't jump with great fluency. Um, you know, obviously I know it was a graded race and he's back in handicap tomorrow, so you just have that bit of a maybe just that just sharpen him up and just have that bit of edge. But one more I'm just gonna throw into the throw my hat into the ring and say Lord de Manil. He's um like I couldn't believe he's actually only a nine year old. I thought I expected him to be like eleven, twelve year old. He's not a, he's not an old horse for staying chaser. He's loads of good form around Haydock. Um you know, I just think he'll run. He no matter what, he'll run his race, and I think he'll definitely be in the shape shake up going to two out. And if something beats him, well and good. But I think you get a very good run for your money if you back Lord of Manil. Okay, yeah, absolutely fantastic horse. He is surprisingly young as well. He cannot have it soft enough. He's got Haydock form. Pat Cooney, <coughs> tell us how the market's going to go. Then I think Remastered will probably go off clear second fab, but not enough to trouble Royal Pagai. Yeah, it's an interesting theme really on the Saturday races that we found in the recent weeks. Uh, the surname Williams seems to be driving most of the punters' thoughts here. People either back Venetia Williams or Evan Williams at the moment, and there seems to be a decent policy. So, Roy Pagay, you look at that nine to four. No bargain, is it? He's got to give £11 and plus away in weight. Um, I, I think he's one of those. If he wins, he wins, but I think you can look elsewhere in the race. I do agree with Jerry to a degree. Lord de Maynil, he's been at Haydock four times, three wins, so he's going to be very much in the equation. Uh, remastered, he would have won a Labrick, wouldn't he? And Empire Steel, he would have won at Weatherby last time. So I think you can oppose his favourite if he beats you, so what? I do think Empire Steel, I, I do think he would have won handily enough at Weatherby, and he's only gone up £2 since then. Um, Sandy Thompson, Brian Hughes aboard, it can only be a positive. I, I, if I had to pick one selection, it would be Empire Steel. But I'm really thinking, yeah, I might have a couple of goes to beat Royal Pagal. And uh, Lord de Mainil on the Haydack form, he's certainly one to consider as well. So I think the favourite can win, but a bit a bit flaky at his price. What a pleasure to be talking all these great characters of the jumping game then in the Peter Marsh. Who wins? Get your comments below. 3.35, the time a lot of you will be waiting for. It is the Clarence House Chase, grade one time and four runners, but... The Clash, it's on. Think Muhammad Ali versus Joe Fraser, Nadal, Federer. Sporting clashes? I've got you. I mean, you just, you know, you, you can name them. Nadal, Federer, Borg, McEnroe, whatever. This is this is building up to be one of those. We'll, we'll say uh, both of them are only one race outside the novice company. But they're both so good uh, that we already expect them to beat everything else that's put in front but of them. This is something that we should be selling, isn't it, now? Uh, I mean, got... tell everyone about it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, for racing fans, it's brilliant. For your casual observer, you say, well, we're so good about a four-hour race, in which two of them have sort of, let's not be too rude about first blow, but are seen to have no Last real, year's winner. But are seen to have no real real choice. But I mean, no, for, for when it comes to big matchups for people in the sport and you know about the sport, this is what we want to see. We want to see these big matchups. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I was talking, you know, early in the season, I was thinking, you know, I think energy mean is too big for the champion chase in relation to Shishkin's price. Now we've got these two running against each other. After seeing what Shishkin did at Kempton, I'm thinking, well, how can anything beat him? Because he was absolutely superb that day. But he's not taking anything on of this calibre, we don't think, do we? Well, he beat a Tingle Creek with a pointless. Yeah. Um, 
but the handicap has got a pound between them, hasn't they? We he still don't know how many come in between be. them. Um, interesting. Top speed figures have Energy Arena a mile behind. It's probably because of the way he wins his races. Um, like, you know, he takes a sting out of horses early and, and, and they probably finish a bit slower. But, he, you know, he's just... You know, they're both except, exceptional. One has run six races by six chases by an average of around 70 lengths, and the other one's won five yeah. by an average of around 60. Like, you know, we don't know. Um, but, you know, from what I've seen, from what I saw at Kempton, I think he's going to take a really, really good horse to beat. And it's a bit like, you know, Altior running against Under So. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's going to, you know, it didn't happen in the Arkle last year and everyone was bitterly disappointed. So now this is just sit back, yeah, enjoy. Sit back, right? watch it. And like, like we alluded to earlier, if one of these horses gets beaten pointless, then the rematch won't happen in the champion chase. Yeah. I'd be sure of that. Why, you know, let's, let's say Shishkin comes along and does, does to Enna Germain what, um, he did to Grenatine at Kempton. Then, it's all over. Then you run Energy Main against Alaho in a Ryanair chase, don't you? Track because no bother for either of them? I don't think it'd be any bother at all. They both they both got faultless records on a right-handed track. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no problems at all. The bubble's got a burst, hasn't yeah, it? We've yeah, got first got flow in there as well. Namula Gold, who's a, a track specialist in handicaps as well. He'll be running on late, uh, probably for fourth place. If they it won't look up. like he's running on, though, will it? <laughs> no, it won't. But listen, <laughs> what a race it's going to be. But you will remember, of course, that Nicky Anderson was getting oh so much stick, wasn't he, when he didn't turn up, of course, in the Tingle Creek. This is Shishkin, of course. We spoke to Nicky back in November. This is what he had to say. Great, so let's be positive about Shishkin. He comes back and now we hope on the 27th. That's at Kempton. So viewers, get yourself down there. You can go, unlike last year. And then it might be something like the Clarence House, Cheltenham, maybe punch us down even, try and emulate Sprinter. We'll cram it all in. And um, those clowns that want to write silly things about him, this time of the year can um, hopefully eat their hats at the end of the season. Well, there you have it. We had it before the old Labricks Trophy weekend, didn't we? I think he's new. Uh, Jerry, he's been proven right, of course. You've got to do the best thing for the horse. I, I won't go into the politics of what it must have been like at Seven Barrows when all that was going on. And it did seem a bit heated at times. But Shishkin came out, did what we expected him to do at Kempton. He's come to the Clarence House. He's now got Energy Mean up against him. Where do you sit with this? How excited is everyone in the yard? And what sort of character is Shishkin? Has he come on for the run? I can ask you many, many questions more. Yeah, it, it's brilliant. It's a good, good story, really. Like, it, it's been a brilliant, like, even the last seven days, it's been fascinating kind of build up because I think, like, it was kind of all over TV, like, last Saturday when Nicky had his good five winners at Kempton or four winners at Kempton, whatever it is. And, like, that morning, Shushkin had done an unbelievable bit of work and he kind of put, like, his hat in the ring literally and said, you know, he's running next Saturday. Obviously, fingers crossed that everything goes well in the meantime. But, yeah, he, he put it out there that he was running. Um, it might have been a bit of a scare tactic, hopefully. Well, I suppose he was probably hoping it's going to be a scare, scare tactic for Mr. Bullins that he mightn't send over Nergamine. But he has. It's fascinating. And the, the best thing about it is you probably think, oh, Seven Barrows knew the horse was coming. Nobody literally knew nothing until declarations at 10 o'clock yesterday morning, which has probably been, yeah, it's kept that kind of element of surprise. It's been a kind of like I said it's been a good build up and like you said I do think we need to really push this race because it is a, like it's a race it could be like it could be the race of the season so far and um, some people said to me during the week they were hoping an argument didn't come so that we had the big clash at Cheltenham but you know yourself both horses are healthy um, and we know how hard it is to get horses to Cheltenham in one piece so they're both healthy they're both taking each other on so yeah it's a fascinating race to look forward to. Is this the best chaser currently in training Jerry? Shishkin. Um, yeah, I'd probably have to agree with that. I suppose on ratings, the handicapper probably thinks he is. And like you said, he is very exciting. Um, what I love about this horse, though, he's not your typical two-miler. He doesn't go everywhere quickly, not like Sprint to Sacra or Altior did in their heyday. You know, they like they would have won a mile and a quarter, mile and a half, maiden on the flat, whereas this lad wouldn't. He'd have been lapped. But he's just, he's just so laid back. He's such a good temperament. And even though he runs over two miles, you could easily stretch him out to three mile two if you wanted to. You know, he's just that versatile. He's so chilled out. And yeah, hopefully he, um, so he runs a massive race tomorrow. Has that been discussed for the future then? Because you said three mile two for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was going to say three miles in a King George horse. Ah. I said I might go three mile two for the full Gold Cup trip. Uh, yeah, has that has that been discussed at all? Because I think he'd get any trip standing on his head to m myself. He's, he's just one of those. But 
you know, would there be thoughts? I mean, a lot of the times you get these two milers and when they're stepped up to three mile, three mile plus, it's always at the end of their careers when, when they've done it. Is there, would, would you think there's any chance of this horse being stepped up while he's still in his prime? Um, I, I totally agree. I think you could step him up tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon if, if you wanted to. He's, like I said, he just has the temperament. He has the demeanour to do so. He's a point-to-point -point winner. But, like, he's well-documented. Like, you know, Nicky, he just he has a great ability and talent of training speed into horses. And, like, this horse, he's not your typical two-miler. He's doing what he's, he's doing. He's beaten everything he's put in front of him so far over two miles. So I suppose it's probably a case if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And hopefully it'll be the same way tomorrow afternoon. Well, four o'clock tomorrow anyway. Mm, you can just see Nico, can't you, coming up to Enigamine too. Out. I mean, it's proper exciting. <sighs> We've got to have a word for Enigamine, haven't we? But it seems a bit shishkin heavy at the minute. This is a brilliant horse potentially, isn't it? And hats off to Willie Mullins and Tony Bloom and oh. all the connections are close up. And oh, four yeah. coming over yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, at the end of the day, we all know who we fancy, but we don't know for sure, do we? I oh. mean, Enigamine... What he, what he did to Notebook the other day, he absolutely just ripped him apart, didn't and he? The and the second came out one over hurdles. A, and that is a, that is a horse that can can jump at speed early on in races, like you know what I mean. He just went with him and just and just blew him away, yeah. didn't he? He's a very very good horse. We we need to wait and see just how good because you know that's the important thing. Neither of them have been really really tested. Do you think David Bass is going to try and put it up to him like he did to? When he won last well, year. Well, I, I think he could do. It depends on what the tactics are and energy mean, really, as well, whether they sit behind or they decide to go. He's only got one. Uh, this mean, is a was... bit like Corsair and Denman, isn't mm. it? Again, we're going on. But this is this is as close to what you've got. You've got one, I don't want to say workmanlike about energy mean, but you've got one bulldozer, let's put it that way. And you've got Nuriev, haven't you, in Shishkin? Well, yeah, yeah. You always talk about these matches and then your Imperial commanders come along and, uh, and, do, uh, them all. and, and do them all. So yeah. you don't know. Let's not rule him out. He's a very good horse. He's just come off a Peterborough chase win. Uh, I would say that he looked like he needed two and a half mile then. It was the ride of the season for me last uh, year when Dave Bass won uh, Yeah, and he, you know, he really took the ball by the horns and went for it, and he might do that again. <laughs> but he's will. got, bet, you know, potentially much, much better horses to deal with. This yeah, can, he, can he do it? Like, well, you know, so. But he is an Ascot specialist, and, you, you know, yeah. you, he can be a specialist track. No My point in it. trying to say that, this is not going to be one of your after you, after you, slowly, slowly sprint. This you will be tactically... So. Well, you wouldn't have thought so. You'd think they would go on a little bit like what Surname did to Altior. Mm. You know what I mean? There's going to be a gallop. It's going to suit Shishkin, you think, on paper, isn't it? Pat mm. Cooney, you've been sitting again, quietly, <laughs> waiting to come on for your cameo appearance. Here it is. The market, to my <laughs> eyes, looks a little bit short on Shishkin. Yeah, there's only a pound between them on official ratings, so they should be a lot closer together. That's my take on it. Um, I just think, it, what, what a race, you don't have to have a bat in it. Just go there, enjoy it. I actually think they should fly Michael Buffer in, the, uh, you know, the great American uh, boxing announcer. You know, let's get ready to rumble, all that kind of thing. It's a race that deserves hype it up. We have 48-hour decks, so we know what's going to happen. Get Michael Buffer over here. He'll liven the show up even more. So, um, yeah, what will win? I suppose Nico de Bonville's got the easier task, hasn't he? He knows where to find Paul Townend and David Bass, and he can just sit and watch. But... Uh, in organ aim, he, you know, he, he he just wins his races very early on, doesn't he? And uh, I, I I think at prices currently, I'd rather be with an organ aim, but I just want to watch the race and I hope they get there. And I hope it's uh, almost a dead heat and uh, we can uh, have the sequel in Cheltenham. That's exactly what it's all about. You've sent Michael Buffer there. Don't worry, Pat. I've been <laughs> polishing my impression for this studio on Saturday. Let's get ready to rumble! Right then, after all's been said and done, what are the winners this weekend? It's nap time for you. And Jerry McGrath's been sterling work so far, Jerry. There's a future for you on this side of the camera, mate, if you want, but it will all hinge your appearance on a nap. Yeah, well, I suppose it would be very easy to just sit here and give you Shishkin a two to five or whatever, something like that. But I'm going to go for the 145 at Ascot tomorrow. Another horse of Nicky's, surprise, surprise, but he's called Phil Dudary. He's first run for Seven Barrows. Um, he comes from Joseph O'Brien's where he was trained. He was always highly tried in Ireland. He ran a few graded races. He had a couple of falls over fences. Um, so he's back over hurdles tomorrow, two and a half miles. Um, just get his confidence back. But he's fit, he's ready to go, and hopefully he runs a big race in the 145. That has absolutely stumped me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he was well backed in the week, he was, actually. He's a fascinating horse, because if you remember, he had form behind MYLN, mm. and I thought he would go and win uh, a handicap at Cheltenham or the lights. He just didn't. But Nicky has 
kept him in these valuable handicaps. And mm. I thought unexpected mm. party would take a lot of beating in that. In that case, that will force me to the 220 for my nap. And I think Western Victory, recently inherited by Emma Lavelle, will run through a brick wall for me again in the Mayor's Hurdle there. I absolutely love this one. Keels. Uh, yeah, I, I I can understand the money behind Feedy Dairy, especially now that we know that he's sort of fit and well to go because he's he, he, he's unexposed at this, that sort of race. But uh, I just think looking at the prices, I thought Stoner's Choice was a massive price each way. Uh, he ran third last time at Musselburgh, um, way too sharp of a steady pace. Is this in the 145 way as well? Too, yeah, in the 145 as well. Way too sharp of a steady pace. Uh, really stayed on strongly at the end. Um, the, t the two, the first and second were ridden by decent claimers, taking off chunks of weight. So he was effectively giving them twenty nine pound and twenty seven pound. I think that wasn't far off the best run of his life. He won very easily the only t previous time he ran at Ascot in a handicap in March. So he's a double figure price. He's been in the first three, eight out of ten hurdle starts for Fergal O'Brien, who can't do anything wrong. Uh, so I, I think he's a good each way bet. I think that's the first time the three of us were ever going to unknowingly yeah. nap in the same place. Against each other. <laughs> Against each other. So about the pair. All right, Pat Cooney, tell me you're napping something at Ascot. Yes, I am indeed. I'm going for the 405, and I was hoping not to fancy this one because uh, pronunciation is a little bit difficult. It's number eight, Gallia de Lito. Uh, number eight on the race card was stick to. Trained by Dan Skelton, ridden by brother Harry. Won a point to point over three miles. Made a UK debut at Weatherby, absolutely gagged up, won by 30 wickets. Uh, form questionable, maybe, but always going to win by a wide margin from start to finish. She goes up another two furlongs in trip. That'll be a benefit to her as well. So, uh, Gallia Delay 2, hopefully by 4.05, I'll have pronounced it even better. Absolutely, it was 4.05 <laughs> on you didn't, but uh, we went up towards even money all of a sudden. Listen, there you go. There is your multiple of sorts this weekend. Well, Sally, that's all we've got time for on this weekend's What a Shout. What a race we've got, the Clarence House, but there are brilliant races elsewhere as well, Keels. Uh, yeah, plenty of good races. Plotting up, are you? Plenty of good racing. Yeah, um, well, I, you know, I go to Ascot every Saturday meeting, whether it's flat or jumps. Uh, but I'm, I'm stuck with a family do because the father-in-law couldn't make Christmas because everybody <laughs> in the house had COVID. So uh, it's the only day uh, that we can all make it. He know. really doesn't like you, does he? A Sunday. <laughs> I was hoping it'd be a Sunday, but... I can't get out of it. I've got to, I've got to behave. So, uh, no, staying indoors. Brilliant. All right. Okay, Pat Cooney, what about yourself? Yes, uh, Ascot Bound, and uh, we sponsor there, of course. But um, You just wanted to rub that impact, didn't you? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and I just hope it's a gorgeous day, and I hope the best tours wins in the uh, the big clash at uh, in the Clarence House. It will be a stunning day tomorrow, whatever happens. And what a stunning debut it was from Jerry Maguire on What a Shout. You'll be back, Jerry, please. If you'll have me, yeah, definitely. No, it's been good fun, definitely for sure. And listen, Jerry, it was a great 12 year career. All the best for the future, man, from Moss Hall here at Water Shout. And thank yeah. you for watching as well. Right, who wins it then? Let's get the poll started. Now's the time. Shishkin and Ergamine could even be first flow. Get your comments in below. Don't forget, loads of racing this weekend. Gamble responsibly wherever you are. Don't forget to download the free must have Racing Post app as well as Google it on the App Store or the Google Play Store itself. Myself, Dave Orton, enjoy the sport.